Welcome, Motenta people. Life is worth living regardless of who has been affected. Lover or hater doesn't make this charming lady less talented. As a teenager, fans saw a peculiar spirit that pervaded the highly energetic life of Paulette Goddard. Described as a viciously independent lady with a will of her own, mainly to survive and win. Some say she was a romantic dynamite and a great socialite. Her immense contribution to Golden Age Hollywood cannot be overemphasized, though not without scandal. Was Paulette Goddard's love a sin with Charlie Chaplin? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Motenta's channel. You never know with men, sure, but the unpredictable nature of female legend Paulette Goddard is such that would make anyone give it up for the ladies. I would not know exactly what you think about the career life of this lively lady who came to Hollywood, like every other ambitious young lady, saw and conquered with her fierce mindset. She was vivacious, cute, and sexy. It's not just about the controversies or her erratic marriages or those ambitious secrets that characterize her history. I'm just wondering how she was able to pull the rug on people who mattered, including her father, the one rare scenario that no one expected. And yet, long after her fantastic career actions in movies and reality, her story continued to excite the imagination and interest of millions of us who were privy to the goings-on in the industry at that time. At a very young age, not older than 14, Goddard was already taking care of her bills, making income, dancing her way in at Zeekville's Chorus Row. To say Goddard was a curiously American beauty personified would be both fair and complimentary. Her kind of excruciating beauty embedded her in natural complexity, in the kind that would warn any man, like the biblical advice to young men, to be wary of the charm of a sultry woman. You can't talk about the variety of charismatic men and women of Golden Age Hollywood without a close reference to Goddard and her performances that extended from Hollywood's earliest hand-cranked era to the mid-1940s. Goddard's huge break came after she got the attention of legendary Charlie Chaplin, with her poignant staging in modern times. She took her opportunity with both hands and effectively exploited it to her advantage. A year before she became an adult, Goddard met and married a wealthy and very older lumberman identified as Edgar James. The union was a brief type, but she was able to get a good bargain because she obtained a divorce settlement loot of $375,000 in 1932. Now positioned for a future exploit, and adequately empowered, Goddard's stage was set for what is now known as her adventure moves, with her seemingly colorful character. After meeting Goddard on Joseph Shank's yacht in 1932, Charlie found her stunning and amusing, but Our Lady had a proposal that would put her on the table for future discussion. As young as she was, Goddard had eyes on greatness. With some cash now to support her vision of producing movies, she didn't hesitate to open up to the movie mogul. Chaplin, who was among the notable faces at the time, was already trapped by her splendid image. Though Goddard began with bit parts in movies, with her delightful blonde as Goldwyn Girl, Chaplin thought it wise to convert her to his leading lady, resulting in his 1936 Modern Times production. Her career history depicted Goddard as one who passed through the Hollywood studio system, though I'm not sure how she learned her spirited glamour that is akin to her list of works. She is arguably best remembered for her role in The Cat and The Canary, directed by Elliot Nugent, a movie she co-starred with Bob Hope in his initial best outing. But sadly, her career wasn't the only thing she is famous for, because her life appeared faded for a chaotic end. Paulette Goddard exploded against rules, an ambitious nature-made brunette who intended to compete with platinum blondes with her fierce flaming personality. Her long-established and gossipy romances with richly blessed dudes would also add to her prominence. Lest I forget, Goddard had a flair for springing surprises and changing bad situations around, only that she could not escape fate itself. Her marital privacy was never private because she was always in the news, from the now-shocking marriage with Chaplin to Burgess Meredith, and later to Eric Maria Remark. The media had their eyes and ears in it. At the time she married Remark and relocated to Switzerland, almost all of her fans knew that it was time for her to retire. But she didn't give up on her love for attention and fame. 
she became one of the remarkable glitterati before her death. This wonderful lady who started as a child fashion model had a stormy debate every time her name was mentioned, from a young beauty whose date of birth is yet to be ascertained to a baby girl who was estranged from her paternity. Several years later, and still troubled by her abnormal childhood, Goddard made an awful assertion about her father that left millions of fans baffled. In case you're not sure of the personalities in focus, her birth name is Marion Levy, born in Manhattan to Joseph Russell Levy and Alta Mae Goddard, but raised in Kansas City. Her father was a Jewish Russian. Pauline, as she was fondly called by her mother, had sweet memories of life in Missouri, where her father worked in a movie firm. But when her parents separated, her mother eloped with her daughter to avoid a custody lawsuit. And so for many years, Goddard lived and grew up with her mother, touring, including Canada. As you may have guessed, details of her date of birth and other childhood facts remain scanty. But her acting talent began to show when she joined Broadway performances as a Ziegfeld girl. Her association with Chaplin was both professional and personal, as she became his lover and partner. She appeared as a lead actress and soon rated among Paramount's biggest stars following her role in The Cat and the Canary. Her part in So Proudly We Hail in 1943 won her an Academy Award nomination for Best Supporting Actress. Working with Chaplin was a big boost to her career as she gathered enough praise from fans. Chaplin appeared to be slow for ambitious Goddard, who already tested fame and was willing to maintain her status as she got a contact going with David O. Selznick, where she appeared alongside Janet Gaynor in the Young in Heart 1938 comedy. Selznick was impressed by her performance, but his team agreed that Goddard will require training to be able to suit the next production, but Vivian Lee later took the role from her after Technicolor screens tested for the two. The loss was later attributed to wrong publicity by her handlers. By the time Goddard saw her father again, she was already a celeb. When her parents divorced, a lot of things played out in a form of accusations and counter-accusations about who caused the disintegration. Though the main reason for the severed relationship is still a subject of debate, a version of the story suggests that her father abandoned the family. This is also the angle that Paulette was projecting as she made the public believe later in life, especially as she tried to show her total resentment against the man who brought her into the world. She had suggested that her father abandoned her and her mother when they needed him most. That, however, may not be the true situation, as the certain scenario is suggesting that her mother may have been responsible for the fracas. Mr. Levy insisted that her mother was to be blamed for whatever might have happened between them and accused her of a disturbing sacrilege. His version of the information was that after an issue came up, Paulette's mother ran away with her daughter and avoided the legal process of separation, the reason she never stayed in one location during the period with Paulette dodging their daughter's custody clash that she was likely to lose. Expectedly, the incident left an indelible negative impression on the life of young Paulette as she grew up with the scars and spoke boldly about it, showing how deeply affected she was. Whether Goddard was fully expressing her grievance or reinforcing something her mother told her in 1938, no one can tell. But the fact remains that she told the world that Levy was not her biological father. In a swift response, Levy was very angry that he immediately instituted a lawsuit against his daughter, suing that the information had destroyed his reputation to the extent of making him lose his means of livelihood and asking the court to compel his daughter to support him financially. The outcome of the case was negative for Goddard because she was asked by the law court to place her father on a $35 weekly stipend as part of the judgment. Logically, I can understand the angle Paulette was coming from, having been nurtured and properly positioned for fame by her wealthy maternal great-uncle, who was also her male role model, Charles Goddard, the man that linked her to Ziegfeld, where she began her Broadway shows. Recall that the linking led to Paulette's impressive stage debut in No Foolin'. Goddard's first marriage with Edgar James in 1927 lasted for two years before their separation, which was finalized in 1932 after the two relocated to North Carolina. It was reported that she met him through the same Charles Goddard. Of course, Charles worked so hard to position young Paulette for greatness and tried to get her first family running. 
After performing in a play and musical, she came out and met Edgar, who was very much older, but regardless of that, more so with the influence of Charles Goddard, she went in for the marriage. Even though she soon discovered that it wasn't her idea of what a happy marriage should be, leading to the eventual divorce that eventually gave her a starter pack in the form of a cash settlement. When Goddard started an affair with Charlie Chaplin, the romance was so hot that she later moved into his apartment in Beverly Hills. Then rumors went around that they were married, as they were said to have secretly married in China in June 1936. Their romantic partnership was not love at first sight, because the two had things going before they decided to bring their togetherness more private. After meeting Chaplin, Paulette was said to have asked her his opinion about investing her divorce fund in a certain business deal after she put in $50,000 of her money in a murky film outfit. He was said to have instructed her to halt the arrangement, which she did. He went ahead to offer her a proposal that would mark the beginning of her upward career shift. Paulette may have requested professional advice from Chaplin. She got extra advice. He was said to have given her tactical career advice concerning her appearance. Before this time, Paulette took an extreme decision to have her hair color changed from her natural brunette curls to platinum blonde. The outcome Chaplin may have observed made her a sort of ubiquitous light-colored woman in Hollywood. So he didn't like it and hence advised her to return to its original color. Paulette did as she was told, and the outcome was positive for both of them, because Paulette left a wonderful impression on Chaplin that made their relationship stronger. Chaplin purely bought her contract and made a deal with her, which was both nice and preferable, so she accepted it. Her association with Chaplin was very interesting and highly rewarding for Paulette, who was simply an amateur actress that was put through tutoring by her boss for necessary social skills. She later recalls that she learned some of her seduction tricks from Chaplin. Critics also think that she learned some aspect of her sophisticated flirt under him. He taught me to speak for three minutes on any subject, but not four, she had said. Soon their working relationship entered the second stage, as Chaplin transformed from being a tutor to Paulette's passionate lover. Being a famous person, the romance became a media sensation at the time, with Paulette regularly appearing on pages of the print. To say the obvious, it was among the hottest celebrity jest and added flavor and glamour to her image for pulling with the great Charlie Chaplin. But I must say, one person who didn't find the relationship amusing was Tora Ichikono, who was Chaplin's chauffeur and private secretary. His job was being threatened by the relationship, as was reported. It was so until Kono was settled with another job elsewhere. The coast became free for the duo to rock their romance without any internal hindrance. Paulette and Chaplin's affair soared high as they were helplessly devoted in it and they were always together, living lavishly. Chaplin bought a yacht for weekend trips to Catalina and gallivanting to Canton, China, but the union was suspicious and controversial. Some rumors trended all over the media about them not being legally married. The two didn't seem to be bothered by the rumor as the opposite version of the story suggested that they were secretly married, and it was really difficult to confirm anything because none of them spoke publicly about the legality of their love life. A simple comment credited to Chaplin referring to Paulette as his wife at a movie premiere is the closest public confession to that. Yet the romance continued with both parties very happy together. Some years later, Paulette confided in her relatives that a legal marriage with Chaplin never happened. They married on a gentleman's agreement, though after their separation, Paulette remained friends with Chaplin and his kids. When Goddard married Burgess Meredith in 1944, she was reported to have lost her to-be child through a miscarriage. It was her only pregnancy, so she didn't have a child from her marriage. At some point, Meredith was outlawed from Hollywood, and the sentiment around was that the couple had a communist inclination. An incident of a baying crowd shouting communist while they were heading to a premiere had angered Goddard, so much so that she wanted to start a fight with her diamond chain against the raging crowd. When Goddard married writer Eric Maria Remark, they remained together until he died. And on the 23rd of April, 1990, Goddard was declared dead from heart failure in her Switzerland home at the age of 79. Hollywood stars often keep huge secrets. Was Yul Brenner a drag queen? You have to watch this video.